Good morning YouTube viewers and subscribers. After looking at this new mat and the glare it puts on this, the lighting has on it, I'm not really sure I like it, but we're going to work over it anyway. So when I left off last time, <coughs> I had put the connecting rods on here and I was waiting for the bearing that goes in here. Well that bearing arrived and as you can see I've installed it. Now this was a little dicey I guess because it's a recessed bearing as you can see and it's really deep down in there. So what I had was a deep well socket that fit that bearing perfectly and what I did was I put it in there the hole without the bearing to see about how deep it sat. Then I put the bearing in there and when I heated this area of the case up with my heat gun I just heated this area here. I wasn't trying to heat the whole case up. Just this. And because of the shape of this it was a little tough to actually try to fixture it on the press so what I did was I dropped the bearing in there and then just kind of tried to use that, that socket to try and make sure it was flat and I put it in my press and I pressed it in just a little bit because I really couldn't get on there and put it, any real pressure on it. So I got it started with that and I looked around the socket and made sure that it looked like it wasn't angled at all and that it was going in straight and then I basically just had my gloved hand on to hold this thing put that thing in there and then with a rubber mallet I just tap that home <clears throat> and I would test it periodically by dropping this crank camshaft in there just to see how far it sits so the next step for this engine is to actually time the engine now before I put anything else together now I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here this is probably the easiest timing of a four-stroke engine I've ever seen in my life and that even includes the HP rotary valve engines. So what you do to time this thing is rotate it and hopefully you can see here there's a dimple or a dot on this timing wheel and you put that at top dead center which means both of these connecting rods or the pistons would be at top dead center. Now this camshaft timing wheel has this hole in it and all you do is just drop this thing in place and that tooth or that dimple is on a tooth and this hole spans two teeth so you basically just do this and voila your engine is timed and that's all there is to it so I've got my guide pins for these two in here I've got my bearing installed, some oil in there, a little bit of assembly oil, and I'm just going to mate these two pieces now. And I've got all my screws lined up here, ready to go. So I'm just going to start dropping them in. These two have a longer screw and nut. Okay, there you have it. I didn't know I had that zoomed in all the way, damn it. Alright, so let's see here. This is where the carb goes, so the engine would go like this. So this is the left side. So now I want to go ahead and start getting the parts here for the left side. Let me pull my left cylinder parts over. Okay, so I've got my cylinder here and I need to get my piston put on here. Let's extend this out. Got my piston and its rod. Put those little Bushings in here. Push 
in real firm. Get that out of the way. Get just a tiny bit of oil around here. Kind of wipe this oil this piston up again. Same with the inside of my cylinder. Okay, that part's done. Now as long as I keep this engine in this orientation and my cylinder parts separated, I can just do the same thing on each side. Okay, I'm ready to install the head on the left side now. These push rods, the rubber on these the little O-rings up at the top were really brittle and they broke. So I don't have replacement. So all I've got here is just a small piece of heat shrink tubing that is not heated down. It's just kind of there to add, be like a little spacer. The bottom I was able to find some uh, little O-rings in my Harbor Freight kit that should work fine for that area. So, I need to put a drop of oil in this channel because that's where my head shim is going to go. Just like that. Put this on here. Now the longer screws go in the back. I'm just going to drop those in. The shorter screws go in the front. Really all I'm going to do right now is just kind of engage these by a couple of threads so I can fit my push rods in there. I'll check and make sure it looks like it's even all the way around. See those O-rings, Harbor Freight O-rings fit in here really nicely. They're completely submerged and up here it looks like these are good too. I guess I can take this off for now. <clears throat> Just making sure everything looks even before I apply some torque to this. So that heads on. Now all we gotta do is drop push rods in there. One each. Okay, so this rocker arm assembly has got the pin that holds the rocker arms, the bracket, and I've got to find the two little 1.5 millimeter set screws to hold that in place and get those started. And now, install our rocker arms. Hopefully, that will stand up, but I may have to go find a piece of foam. That's not ideal, but it's okay.
there's a spacer that goes in between as I start to thread this or put this pin in. I just want to catch that. Oh, I didn't start screwing that down. Should be completely free. Oh, you know why. Put that at its lowest point. It might help. Looks like it's operating. And that completes that side, more or less. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and just throw this cover on here, even though I haven't set the valves yet. I'll set the valves a little bit later after I get this all assembled.